False endings, false beginnings. That's what I want to talk about today. I joined a cake group, a, a, a sweet treat maker group back in 2015. It was all about running your own bakery. Some of the people had bakeries at home, some of them had storefronts, and some of them produced things for um, wholesale. So it was the wide variety of, of people making these sweet treats. And I joined because they just seemed like-minded to me. They just seemed like they were kind of doing the same thing I was doing, kind of working alone a lot of the time, trying to, to do really good work, and of course trying to find an audience for their work. So I joined this group and uh, I have real affinity for so many people in the group and they've helped me tremendously over the years. And whenever I would be out, you know, out and have a problem of some kind, I would tend to say, to my family, oh, I'm going to have to ask my cake group friends about that. And, um, you know, people who heard that thought, what, what are you talking about? What is a cake group? But uh, those were my cake group people, and they helped me with business questions that I had. Like when I used to run events here, I would ask uh, about how much time in advance to announce the thing, different ways of announcing it, um, and also how to, what, maybe what to charge. They just are really exquisite when it comes to the language of dealing with uh, the public, especially about a creative endeavor, because every one of the cakes that they make is a creative thing. They have to bake it, of course, and then they have to um, decorate it. And, you know, sometimes, you know, the stories were, sometimes the stories were funny, sometimes the stories were kind of sad, because you, oftentimes if you're getting a custom cake made, it's being made because there's a major celebration or something really important happening in your life, and oftentimes weddings. And if that cake didn't come out perfect, uh, you were certainly going to hear about it. It's also a high maintenance time for a lot of people. So they might have agreed to certain things about the wedding cake and two days before suddenly they want to change their minds with a different flavor or something different on top. So, so these gals, and for the most part they were gals, there were, there were men in the group too, but for predominantly it was a female group, they would really have to uh, thread the needle between giving good customer service and also standing up for themselves. And that's also where we all uh, acquired the language of your business, your rules. So if somebody ran their bakery a certain way, it was your business, your rules, you know, your prices, your policies. And same thing, that's how I brought that back to my art business. I said, my business, my rules. So I don't feel in competition with anybody because I just consider myself a bakery, just like there's a bakery down the street that might uh, make different things, maybe has a different recipe or a different price structure. It really doesn't matter. And we all know in many towns there are several bakeries. So there can be many artists, and we all know there are many artists. So uh, I just feel like the only person I'm in competition with is, is my own self to be better at, at doing this thing that I, that I love to do. So that group is ending. Uh, we are going to keep the face group going, but in terms of the business part of it, it is ending. And the reason it's ending is because the leader of the group is uh, a dynamic person who's moving on to other endeavors. Now, one of the reasons she's moving on to other endeavors is because similar to the painting world, as you know how saturated we are in the world of uh, painting, the cake world got saturated and it got saturated because there were shows back in 2015 uh, even back as far as 2013 there was cake wars there were cupcake wars there was competitions for wedding cakes uh, all these different things you know, it was on the food network and and on other uh, networks as well and uh, lots of people got into the bakery business and um, it got saturated uh, and also, it's, it's a really tough business. You know, it is definitely a seven day a week business where you create, you know, tend to do your baking on a Monday, your crumb coating on a Tuesday, your decorating on a Wednesday. I mean, you have to be really, really organized in order to produce product. And then on top of that, you have to be creative. And sometimes I'm just blown away by that because I don't have to do any of that. I just have to take out a new piece of paper and if things don't go my way, you know, I rip it up. I don't have somebody's wedding expectations that will be demolished because of something that I do. So the pressure is really, really high on these people. And the other thing that's really high on these people uh, in terms of pressure is, yes, those are really celebratory events and they tend to happen on weekends or holidays. And so, you know, that takes a toll on your family life as well. 
So those were the kinds of things that we shared over the years. You know, some of them were business related, some of them were interpersonal, and some of them were just our own egos and you know trials and tribulations. But you know, over a period of years, when you go from 2015 to 2021, you end up knowing these people pretty well and knowing um, you're feeling bonded, definitely feeling bonded. So, um, but in terms of false endings, false beginnings, when I first heard about it, I was really, really sad. And then I thought, no, it's not ending. It's ending in the form that it was, but it's going to continue. And I always need to remember that, that there are these false endings, false beginnings that happen and not put too much emphasis on the endings and see that they tend to be continuous. And I like to think of my life, not just as a line of like, it starts, it finishes, but that it's some sort of spiral in some way, because there are good times and bad times. And, and um, I, I just prefer visually, probably because I'm visual, to think of it in terms of a spiral rather than a line, which seems somewhat preordained to me. So that took me a long time to get to this topic, which is what I really wanted to talk about, which is I, as great as those cake friends are, I think it's really, really important when you're an artist to have an art friend too. Uh, recently, I had sort of a problem that came up for me and I ran it past my family, I ran it past my cake friends, and they all weighed in with really good opinions and I value their opinions, but they didn't know the, um, I, I, I couldn't be sure about their response. I, I knew they were probably right because their, their advice is consistent. But since I don't have the background of being an artist or know that much about say art history or uh, many things having to do with the arts, uh, I really needed an art friend. And so I contacted an art friend and asked the, the question that I needed answered. And also explained to her that for, I, I needed, if she couldn't answer it, that was okay too. I didn't want to put someone on the hook. Like, but, uh, but not only did she answer the question, but she also gave me uh, the art historical reasons for why her answer mattered. And that really helped me a lot. And I thought, wow, I need to really nurture art friends the same way that I have my cake friends. Because the further I go in art and the, um, the more specific I think some of these questions are gonna be. And sometimes it really just takes someone who is walking the same walk that you're walking in order to know exactly what it is you're talking about without you having to go into a very long explanation. And oftentimes it's something that they've <laughs> that they've dealt with already. I'm like, oh yeah, that happened to me once. This is what you do about that, you know? And for me, you know, I started this, uh, I mean, I've been an amateur painter for a really long time, been a full-time painter now for probably about 10 years. But for me, a lot of this stuff is still new. And so, although I'm older, I'm not necessarily really experienced when it comes to uh, certain matters. The other thing that I just wanted to cover really briefly is, I think it's, um, which is somewhat of an aside, but it's, it kind of fits into false endings, false beginnings, is I don't really think there is a time when you become a professional painter. I mean, maybe there is the minute you collect money for something. I guess that would be the identification of being professional. But for people who are posting their art on Facebook or Instagram or anywhere, you know, you're exhibiting your art, I think once you do that, you kind of are in the professional category and you have to accept that people, that not everybody's gonna like what you put up there. They're just not, you're not gonna get 100% likes. Now, the thing that makes this much easier for me is sometimes I'll be watching a Tom Petty video, a concert or, or a song that he's done, and they'll be thumbs down. And I'm thinking, how can you thumbs down Tom Petty? And I thought, boy, if you can thumbs down Tom Petty, then you can thumbs down anything. <laughs> so add me to the list. So I just think that it's really important to remember that when you're putting stuff out there, um, it's, you can just, it's very similar back to the cake business. You know, it's not everybody's taste. Not everybody wants a chocolate cake. Some people want a vanilla cake. It doesn't mean the chocolate isn't great, but it's not for everybody. And I think as artists, we have to accept that we're just not gonna be for everybody. And that's perfectly okay too. You have to please yourself more than anything, which is why that saying, your business, your rules, your art, your rules. That's what really matters. Oh, remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. And I would be really curious to know what some of your false endings and false beginnings have been. And please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.